Hey, how's it going, guys? Captain Cuba here, and today I th I think I have what I think is going to be the highlight of my channel. It's it's not gonna get any better than this. Like right down here, I have Corey Barlock, director of God of War 2 and God of War 2018, and to my left I have the director of God of War Ragnarok itself, Eric Williams. Uh, first of all, guys, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, you guys are awesome. <laughs> Let me get my oh, thanks, uh, my gushy fan out of the way. <laughs> Just <laughs> I love you guys. You guys are awesome. <laughs> thank you so much. We are excited to be here. Yeah. Man. Very much so. So, uh, first of all, like, how's, how's it been, like, you know, to come out to the world, you know, show your game finally? How, how's it been, like, the reception? Oh, that's been quite the uh, oddity for me. I, I, <laughs> I tend to stay very, very quiet behind the scenes, so I, it, was, it was very strange to see all that. I, I got the most text messages I think I've ever gotten in my entire life on my phone that day, yeah. um, and I didn't know what to do. I didn't even answer them for, like, three hours. Um, yeah. But uh, it's been amazing. I, I've been super happy for the team. Yeah. You know, we have a lot of new people on the team that have never shipped a game, uh, let alone a God of War game before. So That's for awesome. them to see that trailer to the world, you know, and just get all the, the praise and people going nuts and all the reactions, it was amazing. And, and people were sending me stuff, you know, and uh, it was is really really special. That's so, awesome. you, you, and yeah, I have heard your name before, but I never actually seen you in any of the documentaries or how the games were made. I've watched all of the God of War one and two document. I've never. I don't think I've seen you. You might have been in one of them, but I, I don't remember seeing your face. I have heard your name before. And David Jaffe talks a lot about you, by the way. <laughs> he, uh, yeah. He works very. Uh, Eric works very hard to stay off of the camera. Uh, in <laughs> yeah. fact, I think in the the Raising Kratos documentary, you'll see him on screen trying to get off of screen. Really? So he's like there and he's running to, to sort of get out of the frame as quickly as possible, which encapsulates perfectly uh, his personality over the years. <laughs> yeah, I, I duck out of the camera all the time. <laughs> um, Whereas I'm a giant whore and I'm in front of the camera as much as I possibly can. Yeah, I mean, I did, see your, works so well I did see your GDC <laughs> talk, Corey, and like you were telling jokes at the end of it, like the Kojima joke. So you're very like, yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and yeah, Corey, how does it feel for time. you to finally have heard of this game? You know, finally Finally, you know, you've heard of it. Uh, right? Yeah. I, I actually still feel like my memory is terrible, but it's nice to have the fog clear just a little bit. And uh, it is an incredible sense of pride, but a, a totally different kind of pride, I think, when uh, we were working on the previous games. You know, when, when you release something, there's that sense of pride and that sort of creator fear when you put something out and you're going to be sort of uh, judged by the masses for it. Um, but when you are kind of in this role where you're working with the the group and you're sort of supporting somebody whose vision is kind of being realized it's a it is a and I don't mean this in a way that I think I'm like your dad or anything Eric but like it is a parental sense of pride this this sort of like I'm just so freaking proud of everybody at Santa Monica so proud of Eric that seeing it come out there seeing the reactions seeing their reactions to the reactions is just it's awesome. It's a whole new uh, it, it, uh, feeling. It's definitely worth it that you guys took a year off to just, uh, sorry, when you delayed it and then like you've taken a year from last September to actually work on it. The game looks amazing. It really does. Like just from the clips we've seen, it's it looks almost done, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. But I guess we can get into that <laughs> later. Uh, yeah. And we always like to look that, but uh, yeah, it's definitely not done. It's definitely not done. Okay, there you, you guys heard it here. It's not done yet. <laughs> so Eric, you've actually been with uh, Santa Monica Studios since the day one. Like you've been working since God of War one, right? Can you expand upon like what roles you had throughout your God of War career? Yeah, I mean, I got here. I think with maybe like sixteen to eighteen months to go on God of War one, and Corey had been here for a while already, and I reached out to him. I was ready to leave the previous company I was at. And I, I think I sent him this funny email that was like, Obi-Wan, you're my only hope uh, kind of thing. It yeah. was entitled, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope. It was yeah. a great was email good. because it's I was feeling the same thing. I was like, oh my God, I need to, to get Eric in here so I can make it seem like I know what I'm talking about. Right. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, it worked out, you know, and he got me to come over and uh, and we started working on the game together. And I remember that the first character at the game, it was the, the pup, puppy Cerberus. You know, oh my like god, I hate those those things. I'm, I'm sorry, I, you're awesome, but I hate those enemies so much. Good, good, good. <laughs> that was what we were going for. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it was the first one they gave me. And it didn't grow at the time, and the big ones didn't spit the little ones, so that was kind of like the first thing I did. Is I put that, And they were like, oh, okay, this, this guy's got a little something. Yeah. And then from there, they gave me the Minotaur boss, 
Uh, and we had to rework that because that, it used to like stand up and throw axes. It was all, it was very different really? than what we shipped. Yeah, it's, there's, there's all kinds of these stories that we could get into, but I don't want to like, take all your time with that. Um, and then finally worked up to, to Kratos and we started putting the air combat into the game and then like the chain yank down and all that kind of stuff. And uh, a good friend of mine, Derek Daniels, came over and then the two of us along with Richard Fogey were like the three-person combat team on God of War 1, which... To look back on all that was done by you know, three designers and how many we have now to get the games done, it's, yeah, yeah. it's amazing. But that's the teams were small back then. Every department was like that. You know, you only had a handful of environment artists that built those whole games, and same thing with engineers and you know effects, everything. So it was really cool. And then got to work too. Corey got the reins, mm. and uh, I remember we were standing out in the parking lot. And it was raining. It was me, him, and Derek, and he was like, "All right, I'm going to do this. Are you guys in?" And we were like, "Hell yeah, let's go!" And, we all, you know, just really pushed hard on that one. And yeah. I was the lead combat designer on that. So I was in charge of, like, planning everything, the creatures, the bosses, Kratos. Um, and that's where Jason McDonald came onto the combat team. He was a junior designer. Uh, so that was awesome. That really started to build the backbone of what Santa Monica combat team was going to be. Yeah, that's the, know, name I, that's the name I always hear when it comes to uh, combat design and design in Santa Monica Studios, like Jason McDonald. He, uh, yeah. he had the GDC talk as well. But yeah, he's he's the guy. He's our design director on this title. Yeah, um, he's, he's, he's been with the genius, studio man. since God of War One. Like yeah. every single one. Like that's that's like his resume. It's Boy. awesome. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> all good. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll watch that. Uh, as we <laughs> Language error. Language error. I, 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 I get excited when I talk that's, about that's that, guys. I'm, I'm out of YouTube now. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's actually a, a good segue into this. Like Corey, how does it feel to because. Look, you've created one, what people consider to be one of the best games of the last generation. How does it feel to step down as director and you know give the reins to Eric? How, how do you feel about that? What game was that? What's that? What game? <laughs> you've never heard of it, huh? <laughs> it's back. Yeah. Um, it feels awesome, honestly. Uh, you know, I was I was destroyed at the end of of that game, and and kind of still had another year after the release where I was still pushing and trying to get out there and talk to people about it and evangelize this yep. team uh, because they're freaking amazing. And then also really take advantage of the fact that like, hey, this is something. So all these studios will let me visit and like give me behind the scenes tours. So I was at CD Projekt Red and got to go up to, um, you know, uh, the, the Insomniac Studios and everybody. So it was just really awesome to kind of do that. I think you visited uh, from software as well, right? Like the Miyazaki? Oh, yeah. yeah that's, that that's, was awesome. That's a cool oh, dude, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and Kojima got to hang out with him while I was in Japan. So yeah, that was amazing and was living the dream during that period, but also exhausted. And uh, you know, before it ended, we were already talking to Eric and I was going on the long, long, long convincing run where just kind of telling him every other week, every few weeks to, you know, hey, it would be really fun, right? It's gonna be awesome. You're, you have uh, really great ideas and, and, and you're the only person I could see doing this and it's gonna be fun, I swear. And, you know, it's gonna be fun. It's only a half lie, yeah. cause it's hard, but there's fun stuff with it. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I kind of really appreciated that. Uh, to be able to, one, see him sort of blossom and move up and kind of start really realizing the things that he wanted to do. Uh, and then also have the time to really kind of step back, understand the, the, the things that I wanted to do and kind of really evaluate, like, what could the next project be? Really give us a, a good runway to prep something. And also there's all this other cool stuff that we're not allowed to talk about but, uh, <laughs> that we're kind of setting up as well. So it's nice to be able to have a wider picture of things uh, while also, you know, again, being able to stay on the sidelines and cheer on my friends. Yeah. And like you guys said, like, it's always good to get a, a fresh new uh, perspective on it, like a, a new director for every game. Like, just, that that's, that's kind of makes my uh, ranking of the game is really hard because it's like, God of War 3 has amazing combat and God of War 2 is also really good, but the story, so it's just, you know, you have these, they're so well balanced, you know, like, uh, and it's just, it's nice to see you take the reins, Eric. And that brings me to my other question, like, how hard has it been to develop this game from home, given the pandemic, because I'm assuming you guys are still working from home, or uh, I don't know what yeah. the, the, the law the law is down there. It's uh, it's been tough. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie about it. it. You know, I think we were in a good spot when we started because most of the team was there, and we had put together this thing that we call the inspiration book. That's like this like hundred pages or so that kind of outlines what we're gonna make, how we're gonna go about making it. And everybody had that. So we had a good idea of what we were going to do before the pandemic hit. So it was mm -hmm. like not as hard to kind of get everyone to understand what we were going to make as much as like, okay, we have to make this now. 
But, you know, I, I really wanted to say, like, you know, hats off to the studio and everything for getting everyone home safely during that because it was it was wild. It was like Friday. Oh, there's some rumblings going on because we were on set. I remember we were finishing a, a day of shooting and then the pandemic kind of started. And then it was like Monday. Everybody was going home. The people were here getting their stuff. And it was yeah. like over the weekend, our IT department was uh, awesome at deploying everything and mm-hmm. getting everyone set up. So I'm going to take this as a chance to give them the shout out that they deserve yeah. because they got everybody at home safe and everybody got kind of settled in and like, you know, working in a, in a good way as best we could. But it is, it's been challenging, you know, being on calls all day long is very draining. Um, yeah. You don't get as much of that, you know, small touches with each other, like where it's like, oh, hey, I was thinking about this, like where you're going to lunch. And there's just a lot of things. And we and you try to have to replicate that in mm-hmm. this work from home environment. So it's been tough. But, uh, you know, I think that trailer shows that, you know, the team can always kind of rally behind something and, and bring it home. And, and yeah. you know, we're going to continue doing that to, to finish the game. I got to ask you about that. It's more of a technical question, but you guys like had the, the, the great idea of making this game cross-gen, right? And it really doesn't show. This looks like a, a next-gen game. Like, how were you guys able to extract so much power out of the PS4? Uh, and something else I did notice is just the fan, like the theorist in me, I did notice that he did, Kratos doesn't have a Bifrost. So you don't have to tell me, but I'm assuming there's going to be a new form of travel in the game. <laughs> Look at Corey. Because <laughs> I know Corey's original vision was a lot more, uh, you know, uh, taxing on the PS4. But maybe you can, ex- you can expand upon how you guys got more graphic out of the PS4, you know. I mean, I'm not going to get into the technical weeds on it. I mean, we have absolutely talented people here, mm-hmm. you know, from the engineers to the artists to the, the build managers, everything that goes into putting this together and understanding the PS4 and now the PS5. And it's, you just put a good team together, you get yeah. behind a solid idea, and then you run into the unknown. Yeah. And it's dark. <laughs> yeah. And then all of a sudden, a little bit of light starts to creep in and someone, you know, is like, this way, this way. And you find your way through all these things. And even back to the PS2, you know, like one of the hallmarks of the franchise has been like no loading, you know, like it didn't load back then. You didn't see load screens. Um, You know, they were all hidden within the game itself. And it's always been that that same philosophy of having one seamless experience from beginning to end. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, that's where the, the, the no cut camera just extends that, right? Because it's like, Oh, now it doesn't cut away either. It's like, it's, it doesn't load. It doesn't cut away. You're just there with them all the time. And that's something that we want. You want you to feel like you live there with them. Like you're in the day with our characters going through the story. So it's, it's not so much about trying to say like, okay, what can the PS4 do? It's like, what do we want to do? And then how do we leverage it or any part of hardware to be completely honest, you know, the story and what you're trying to do comes first, and then the technology kind of supports that. <clears throat> That's really good yeah. to hear because it, it kind of brings me into my other question. Like Corey left so many unanswered questions in the first game, right? And. That's okay, kind of, that kind of feels like an accusation. No, 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 <laughs> dude, like, dude, you you gave birth, you gave birth to my channel and John Ford's channel and and a bunch of other oh. channels, okay? And people are asking Does that how mean I owe child support for your channels or something. What's that? I feel I owe child support for the channels because I, I feel like they are an extended family. I mean, you can always point. become a member. You know, this is no problem. It's just it's one night. I feel like we're gonna have to have summer picnics and everything for the family to get together. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Eric, how are you planning? You don't have to tell me the specifics of you know what's going to happen obviously nor do i want to but how are you planning on addressing all of these questions you know or at least some of them and leaving some of them less for the future what's all right. the rule book here? For, for all your viewers right now spoilers ahead i'm going to answer all of them right now ready <laughs> who blew the so horn good. let's go feel okay. the wind in your hair my friend <laughs> just give it all out let's no. go let's get some art to support these these reveals yeah, yeah, as well yeah, yeah. Yeah, so let's do all those things. Now we're, you know, we're going to keep things close, uh, you know, from now till launch. You know, we wanted, like, we hadn't talked about the game in like three years, essentially. Like, we yeah. we got a little, we got a little excited. You know, we yeah, wanted to yeah. show people what we were working on. Um, First thing was excitement to tell people about it. And yeah. so, you know, we, we want to tell you even more. You know, there's all kinds of stuff I'd love. Like, you know, I got a script sitting right here. I could just pull out and we could go through pages. But obviously, you don't want to know those things, right? So you do this to me now, man. <laughs> I'd be so into a dramatic reading of various parts of the script. Let's do oh, it. Mr. Monotone? Yeah, that would go over real well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we're going to do right by the fans. We're not going to, you know, do a lost where it's like, oh, there's a foot on an island. You never <laughs> Yeah, okay. That, that's kind yeah, of our fear right now. Yeah. Crazy, yeah. You know? So we're, we're going to answer questions, but when it's appropriate, not right now. I, I got you. I got you. And uh, something else fans are really worried about is the new... Uh, okay, so obviously we're very excited for uh, Thor as a villain and Frey as a villain. We knew that was going to happen, right? 
But my community has been asking a lot about Odin, you know, the All Father. <laughs> they they want to see if he's. They want to ask if uh, if he's going to have a big role. If he, if he's going to be important to the story, right? Could you expand upon? I'm not saying anything more about Odin. We've you, said all we want to say. You about said all. Oh, you said, oh, all right, okay, that's that's cool. <laughs> he actually doesn't even know who Odin is. He's just like, yeah, I'm not, I haven't heard of Odin. Like, oh, so he's, wait, like he's taking a page out of your book. Like he's never heard of Odin, right? Right. <laughs> right. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. <laughs> and all cheating off each other's tests. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Eric, how um, can you can you explain? That sounds very accusatory. Can you explain? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> nice. Why did you think it was a better idea to end the the North series with two games? You know, why? What did you think it was a more efficient oh, way? I got this one unlocked. Ask that other guy. <clears throat> Ask the Okay. Oh no! Wait, that was your idea? No way. Yeah. 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 Oh well, Corey, take it away, man. You know, <laughs> can you? All right. Uh, so there are several reasons. I think one of the most important reasons is um, the first game took five years. The okay. second game, I don't know how long it's going to take, but I'm just going to throw out that it's going to take a, a, a close to similar time, right, to do this. And then if you think, wow, a, a third one in that same, we're talking like a span of close to 15 years of a single story. Right. Uh, and I feel like that's just too stretched out. Like, I feel like we're, we're asking too much to say the actual completion of that story taking that long just feels too long. Uh and given sort of where the team was at and where Eric was at with what he wanted to do, I was like, look, I think we can actually do this in the second story, right? Because most of what we were trying to do from the beginning was to tell something about Kratos and Atreus, that the core of the, the, the story's engine is really the relationship between these two characters. And the complexity radiates out like ripples in a pond. And we could make it an ocean, and have those ripples just go for, you know, thousands of miles. But is that necessary and is that beneficial or are we feeling like, you know what, it's just spreading it too far apart, the ripples get too far apart and you sort of lose the plot a little bit. Uh, but being able to kind of condense it and feel like, you know, that experience I had when I got the extended edition box set of The Lord of the Rings and I was able to say like, wow, I could sit down and have like 13 and a half hours of this experience playing them one after another back to back and i just thought that was fantastic amazing so mm -hmm. to be able to say hey man you could probably start god of war 2018 and then play god of war ragnarok and feel like you're getting the entirety of the story right uh and you know i kind of want that to happen maybe before my kids in college uh, <laughs> yeah because my college he's probably not gonna have any interest i will have a small window in which he's gonna be like hey what you're working on is kind of cool uh which you know may only be like a day or maybe an hour the uh but you know beyond that also as we started to talk about what the story could be uh, about where eric really wanted to go the things that were interesting and exciting for him i was like yeah i really do think we can do this because it is centralizing itself always around these characters and then really kind of giving everybody the time that they need right uh so those were important things and you know after that i wanted to really make a big splash with something not sure what it is uh but i think it'll be great that's awesome that's that's really good and uh Eric, like something we, we did see in the gameplay was a lot of combat, and I'm very impressed. It seems to me like you, you're bringing back that move from God of War 3 where you just hook onto an enemy and then bring yourself closer to it. Uh, I could be wrong about that. I'm geeking out like with the, the, the gameplay combat, the traversal. Oh my god, like this sled. That that's, adds so much speed to the game. Like, uh, What lessons are you bringing in from you know, your previous years of uh, you know, working in the God of War series to this new game? Well, I think it started with... Um we had this uh, a little bit of a down window between 2018 finishing and getting the story spun up for this. So we had this part, I would say maybe like two months, maybe three months where we opened everything up to the team. We had this thing called the idea box and anybody could submit ideas on what they wanted. And there was just so much people being like, since we only got the blades halfway into the last game, we didn't quite get to bring it back 100%. So there were so many ideas of like, oh, we should bring back the grapple and we should bring back the, the chain pull and the, what we call combo 5B where he latches guys out of the air and slams them down. And I saw it. There was yeah. just so, so many ideas that, that were like the old stuff. And it was like, okay, let's go through the greatest hits of things we didn't get to and let's bring those back. You know, so there's a lot of that on the team. And then in the same idea box, there's people who are like, oh, well, if we're going to freeze the lake, like how do we get around? And then one of our animators just happened to have gone um, 
a dog sledding. Uh, I think believe she was in Canada. I, I might have got that wrong, um, or uh, Alaska, one of the two. But it was really awesome. So she, you know, we, we saw that, and we were like, "Well, could we do that?" And then we talked to the engineers, and they were like, "That sounds rad. Let's go for it." And so you know, frozen lake, you can't boat anymore. You still got to get around. We didn't want you huffing it on foot. So there comes the dog sled. That is something that has me really excited about this sequel is the fact that it truly feels like a sequel. You guys are following the story because I like I love God of War one and two. But there, there feels a little bit of, of a disconnect between the two games. And this one, like, you have the frozen lake, you know, like, you've seen all of these new characters back, and it feels like just getting back with family. I don't know, it just seems like the proper progression through characters and environment as well. So, you know, kudos Yeah, we wanted to make, like, take everything you knew and make it feel new again. You know what I mean? So, like, the old becomes new again. That was kind of the theme for the, the, the realms that we've been to. And the realms we hadn't been to, it's like, well, we talked about them, so there's a lot to live up to. Like, how are we going to realize those? So, we, you know, we went back to even our own ideas. We were like, okay, what did we say about this realm? And what did, you know, even, like, the down to, like, what does it smell like? Did we make a comment about that? Like, do we need to deliver on that? You know, it's like every little piece, every little detail we wanted to pull together and you know when you when you finally get to visit those new realms i think you'll be you know quite rep- impressed and they stand right with the realms from the last game right oh no my mind is racing with, with ideas on how we're going to explore more of alfheim because it seems like such an enclosed area and i'm like well, how are we going to open that because it seems like it's underground and i'm once again i'm just geeking out just thinking about all these possibilities so yeah you from what we've seen you guys done an amazing job so congratulations on that it's just it oh, thank you so much yeah i'll pass that on to the team yeah yeah yes. <laughs> Everyone, yeah, no, not just you guys. <laughs> and uh, I, we also saw a bunch of enemies. This will be my last question because uh, that's one of the complaints a lot of people had about God of War 2018. Sorry, Corey, just I'm just I'm just I'm just hurting you. I'm just messing you. I, <laughs> I thought it was fine, but people did think that it needed more enemy varieties. And you guys added the Stalker, the Drecky, some Frog dudes. You know, can you expand a few on, on these enemies? Like, you know, how are they gonna interact in, in combat? Yeah, I mean. I- I'm not going to talk about each one of those in specific because, you know, I think the people want to like kind of experience and learn those on their own. We, what we sh- showed is, you know, what we wanted kind of people to see at this point in time, but it was something that even the team, we knew, we were like, man, it'd be nice if we get a couple more enemies in 2018, but you know, it's like some, at some point you got to wrap it up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. like we could have went another year and like, if, then all of a sudden it's another year and it's like the game is never done. So at some point you have to tell yourself, okay, we gotta, we gotta get and move on. So there was quite a few characters that were on the, list from the last game that you know might make an appearance in this game or come back in a different way but it's something the combat team the animators the artists everyone involved with the characters really wanted to expand it and i think when people see the the finished cast you know from both the npcs to the story characters to the enemies they'll be very impressed it looks very good and i have to i have to say i have been defending Corey since 2018 about the trolls like guys they're not boss fights the issue is the health bar it couldn't be on top i I kept but they don't get it they're like they're like the cyclops of the previous games like but no one listened to me so i do hope the trolls come back because i i love them just they're really good enemies yeah yeah. That was a lesson learned that I that I, I made that call and I was like, man, I think this is going to be cool. It'll work out. No one will think that they're bosses. And I was like, wouldn't it be neat if we had their names on there too? Yeah. And I was just digging a hole, man. I oh, was no, just you, digging you, myself deeper and you, deeper and you deeper. You added lore, you changed their design. Like, oh, dude, yeah, they seem yeah. like boss fights. but <laughs> Yeah. 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 Never again will I make that mistake. Next <laughs> game, all I'm going to make is trolls. The next game I'm going to make is just about trolls. It's all trolls all the time, 24-7. There you go. <laughs> don't, don't, let him, don't let him lie to you. I know what he's doing. The troll is the playable character. There, I spoiled him. <laughs> it's a spin-off series. Wait to just you know? give it away, dude. Yeah. I thought there was supposed to be some mystery here. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, I mean, uh, we are the 23-minute mark on my end. I don't know if, if about you guys. Like, do you want me to keep going? I can keep going. I mean, just... <laughs> but it's... it's. I think we would love to keep going, but I think we are at our time, unfortunately. Right, so. okay. Yeah, I, I, pick I, it I up another sure. time. The last question is, like, have I got any theories right? You gotta... Okay, you don't have to tell me which ones, but have I, have I gotten any theories correct, you know? Do you even watch my videos? I'm about to cry now, but go ahead. <laughs> Cuba, we totally watch your videos, and uh, I have to say, there's that one video with that one part in that one section that you totally nailed it, uh, but you also had that one part that was immediately after that one part that in the midsection that you got right that was not right, and it sort of contradicted the part that you got right, so it felt like you were right and you were wrong at the same time, so you kind of have like a Schrodinger's cat theory going on there. That's that's very specific. Thank you. I'm gonna go look through all of them now. <laughs> that could be any of them. But thank you, thank you guys so much. Uh, 
Guys, this has been Corey Barlog and Eric Williams. Um, I can't express to you guys how excited I am to play the, this game. This God of War Ragnarok is one of the most anticipated games ever, and I'm sure it's going to be amazing. So anything else you guys want to say to the community? You know, one last thing, I guess. Uh, look, man, thank you for having us on. We Thank you for... You know, creating a channel that's dedicated to the work that we're doing, that's freaking awesome, man. Thank you. Uh, you are uh, an inspiration to us uh, on the team, as well as everybody out in the community. We are, on a daily basis, fueled by all of your enthusiasm, your theories, and your excitement for the things that we're working on. Because these are long, long marathons that make us extremely tired, and we go to dark, dark places in the middle of this after years of doing it. And it is the light of the fans that, Thanks, that gets That's... us to the end there. Totally stole your light thing from earlier, Eric. Take that. <laughs> oh, now you get to, to answer. You're going to have to top this now. I don't know how he's going to top it. <laughs> I, I'm going to say what I said at the other thing, man. We're, we're fans of our fans. You know, we want to keep doing this stuff with you guys. Um, it's just an honor to be, you know, part of something that you're building. I, you know, I look at how many videos you put together for our game. You know, mm -hmm. like that, that's a lot of time on your yeah. part. Like, you know, just as much as we're investing in making this, you're doing the same thing. So, to, to excite you and, and your community and everyone else that's playing, you know, the game out there. It's, it's awesome. And it gets us excited. You know, the, your videos get passed around all the time. So you're like, hey, hey, did you see this? You know, so it's not like no one knows what's going on. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to have to keep We're in check my voice out, cracks, man. You know, because like... <laughs> we got to make sure you don't get that thing that's right in that other thing, you know, wrong. So we want to make sure that, you yeah. know, it's like we're saying that we can make those theories come true. Uh, in some cases and in other ways go different ways where you're like, damn it, how didn't I think of that? Or, oh, I see what they did. So, that's you know, it's that's that's part of the, the cat and mouse game, right? So yeah. <laughs> we're excited to see what you guys come up with uh, as you move forward. But, um, you know, like I said, right. team is... I'm going to be predicting the story of the next game. Just watch, man. I'm going to be predicting oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys for being here. And uh, for my audience, thank you guys so much for watching. And until then, remember, go forth in the name of Ragnarok. And cut. <laughs> uh.